I was driving home on the highway at about 3 a.m. after finishing my second shift. The highway had three lanes, and I noticed a car far ahead of me swerving quite a bit. Suddenly it veered too far to the right, and then sharply jerked to the left, crashing into the median wall at around 65 to 70 miles per hour. My immediate reaction was an exclamation of shock. I slowed down and approached to find a young girl, probably about 18 years old, standing outside the car, screaming in distress. As I got closer, I saw her mother slumped over in the driver's seat, blood covering much of the steering wheel, airbag, and her head and stomach. I instructed the girl to call 911 while I climbed into the car, trying to stem the bleeding and keep the mother conscious. Despite her injuries, she was somewhat responsive, although her condition was fluctuating. The impact had severely damaged the car and left both occupants in a precarious state. The girl was too overwhelmed to communicate with the authorities, so I had to relay information to the emergency services while still attending to the injured woman. She kept pleading for her mother not to die, but her hysteria only hindered the situation. After what felt like an eternity, the police, fire department, and ambulance arrived and I felt a sense of relief wash over me. The fire department worked swiftly to extract the mother safely from the vehicle. An officer instructed me to document the events, but first I had to wash the blood off my hands, which I hadn't even realized were covered until then. By the time I finished writing my account, my adrenaline had begun to subside, making my handwriting barely legible. Once I was done, the officer said I could leave, explaining that I was only adding to the congestion at the scene. Driving home afterward, I couldn't bring myself to turn on the radio, instead driving in silence, reflecting on the harrowing experience. Sleep eluded me for hours as I replayed the events in my mind. What troubled me most was not knowing the outcome for the injured woman. Despite my efforts to find information, all I could discover was that her condition was still uncertain. It was a night I wouldn't soon forget. Remember, if you're feeling fatigued while driving, it's crucial to pull over and take measures to ensure you stay awake and alert. My young wife and I were in the midst of relocating between cities. After spending the entire day loading our belongings into a large 16-foot trailer, we set off on the drive across the state just before nightfall. I had borrowed a sizable pickup truck to haul the heavy trailer to our destination. The combination of this truck and trailer, fully loaded, made for a cumbersome and slow journey, especially when starting and stopping. As we traveled along a desolate stretch of highway around midnight, Maintaining a speed of roughly 60 to 65 miles per hour, I noticed what appeared to be a couple of deer stepping onto the road ahead, maybe about 200 yards away. My wife was asleep beside me in the seat. I began to slow down slightly and sounded the horn to startle the animals off the road before we reached them. Such encounters were not uncommon in our area, so I didn't slam on the brakes, assuming the deer would move before we got close. They usually did. Suddenly, as the figures came into the light of our headlights, it became clear that they weren't deer at all. It was two men attempting to flag us down. With it being only a two-lane highway, one man stood in the middle of our lane while the other positioned himself in the opposite lane. Realizing that it was nearly impossible to bring our heavily loaded rig to a halt and with no room to maneuver, panic set in. They seemed oblivious to the fact that I couldn't stop. I pressed hard on the brake pedal, continuously blaring the horn in the hopes of prompting them to move. Fighting to prevent the truck and trailer from jackknifing, the brakes screeching and tires locked up, yet the men remained immobile. And I was still traveling at 35 to 40 miles per hour when I approached them. With no alternative, I attempted to navigate between them aiming to keep the trucks centered on the roadway and praying they wouldn't close the gap. At the last possible moment, 
the man standing in our lane leaped out of the way, narrowly avoiding collision. The proximity was so close that I feared our large rearview mirror might strike him. It was a matter of mere inches. The entire ordeal transpired in a matter of seconds. There were no other vehicles in sight, and we found ourselves in the middle of nowhere. Based on their actions, it was evident that these individuals had nefarious intentions. I didn't stop. The thought of how close we had come to a tragic outcome weighed heavily on me. My heart raced, and I struggled to catch my breath. Only later did I realize that when I slammed on the brakes, my wife had slid off the seat and onto the floor. This was before seat belts were mandatory. She groggily rose from the floor and asked, What happened? She had missed the entire ordeal. Certainly not unexplainable, but it was a terrifying experience for me. I had never come so close to endangering someone's life before, and I sincerely hoped it would never happen again. I used to live in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by vast expanses of wilderness, where the nearest signs of civilization were miles away. Despite the isolation, I found solace in the quiet beauty of the landscape. However, one Christmas night, my serene world was interrupted by a chilling encounter that left me questioning the safety of my remote surroundings. After spending the day with my family, I embarked on the familiar journey over the mountain to my girlfriend's house. Her abode was nestled even deeper into the wilderness, an hour's drive from the nearest grocery store. The road leading to her place was a lonely stretch, flanked by dense woods on either side, creating an eerie atmosphere, especially at night. As I drove along the winding road, the darkness enveloped me, punctuated only by the glow of my headlights. Despite the late hour, I was in a hurry, eager to reach my destination before the clock struck 2 a.m. My foot pressed firmly on the accelerator, propelling my car forward at an alarming speed of 80 miles per hour, a reckless decision fueled by youthful impatience. Suddenly emerging from the shadows, I spotted a lone figure trudging along the roadside. The sight of a person in such a desolate location sent shivers down my spine. It was bitterly cold outside, and the thought of leaving someone stranded on Christmas night gnawed at my conscience. Without hesitation, I slammed on the brakes and reversed to offer the stranger a ride. The man, clad in darkness, appeared out of place in the dim glow of my headlights. As he approached, I noticed he was carrying a compound bow, an unusual accessory for a late night stroll. Ignoring the nagging doubts, creeping into my mind, I extended the offer of a ride hoping to provide some semblance of warmth on this wintry night. With his bow stowed in the back of my truck, the stranger climbed into the passenger seat without uttering a word. His silence was unnerving, casting a pall over the confines of the vehicle. Attempting to dispel the discomfort, I initiated small talk asking about his Christmas festivities. However, his response was a barely audible no followed by an ominous return to silence. The journey continued in eerie silence, punctuated only by the hum of the engine and the occasional rustle of the wind through the trees. Despite my attempts to engage in conversation, the stranger remained stoically silent, his presence looming like a specter in the darkness. As we approached a desolate turnoff, the stranger abruptly instructed me to pull over. Sensing a growing unease, I complied, parking by the roadside with caution. The stranger lingered for a moment, his intentions shrouded in mystery before finally stepping out into the cold night air. With the door ajar, he hesitated, his gaze fixed upon me with unsettling intensity. Instinctively, I urged him to retrieve his bow from the back of the truck, eager to conclude this unsettling encounter. As he reached for his weapon, his movements slow and deliberate, he
He turned to face me, his eyes piercing through the darkness with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. Without a word, the stranger vanished into the night, leaving behind an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. As I watched his retreating figure fade into the darkness, a sense of relief washed over me. However, the encounter left an indelible mark on my psyche, a haunting reminder of the dangers lurking in the shadows of the wilderness. Since that fateful Christmas night, I've avoided picking up hitchhikers. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.